Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We have a new box in to unbox. And usually I'd say I am excited, but I'm not. I am ecstatic. Ecstatic is beyond excited. That's like notched up level 10. Because what's in here is something we haven't ever seen before in a watch. And we open up a lot of watches here. This is an Android standalone smartwatch phone from Limfo, our friends at Limfo. Um, but this one, this one sports something we've never seen before in a smartwatch. In terms of memory, it's got, are you ready? 16 gigabytes. The watch you're about to see is a prototype watch coming to us directly from Lempho called the LES-1. They indicate it's available for pre-order on their website. Well, sort of on their website. It hasn't officially been listed there, but in the show notes down below, there's a link to this page where you can add it to your cart and hopefully put it on order. We just found out that our partner Banggood is also going to be offering the Limfo LES-1 in a tiered pre-sale fashion. Uh, the first 30 units are already sold out at $129.99. We're just beginning the next series at $136.99. I don't have any coupons on this one in the show notes down below because it's brand spanking new. And this is the tiered way they're able to introduce the watch to you. It doesn't come out officially till March 27th. And uh, there's up to 200 units at this price. And then it goes up to a final price of $140.99. Oh, wow. This is a uh, one gigabyte, and wow, wow, it's beautiful. And 16 gigabytes, all this, and it's got looks too. Whoa, I wonder if it can cook. Oh, it's got a camera, and a button, and a microphone, and a speaker. This is really attractive. Wow, it's got a subdued bezel that has... Little bitty, gosh, can you see that? Little writing on it, but look how thin that is. Oh my gosh. You know, I, I really haven't even seen a picture of this. I've tried to find some stuff and I got some kind of made over pictures on the web, but I nothing like what it looks like in person. Now, can you see there's an actual screen protector on there as well? I usually take that off, but I'm going to leave it on right now because, for one, I don't see any bubbles on it. And if it's got smooth movement, um, shoot, I might leave it. And what's really cool is there's no big bezel to have to go over the edge. It's just straight across. Wow. Wow. You know, I'm kind of waiting for the watch. And after I have the watch, I could retire this channel and, I don't know, go to Hawaii or something. But, um... It, this is looking awful close. No, I know I won't retire the channel. There will always be new watches. I know. And we're having too much fun with this. So we have a uh, charging cord, standard USB, nothing fancy there, and a dock. So it looks like this watch will use a dock, a charging dock. And let's take a look at it. Got the thingy there. This is cool. It's just, you know, there's no cutouts for buttons or anything. It's just a little saucer with the four connector things and, and magnetic uh, connector thing. There. You can hear my mind going, I wonder if the other, the little cords will work as well, or do you have to use the uh, the dock? Wow. Wow. I like the dock. <laughs> Look at that. It's not going anywhere. That's solid. Um, at the end of the video, I'll, I'll play with the little, uh, um, you know, the magnetic couplers and see if it will work. I'm not sure because it's like the magnets look like they're in here. So if it doesn't stick, it's obviously not going to work. But anyway, the dock, uh, the dock works great. It fits nice. Okay, nice and snug. So what else is in the box? A uh, manual. User manual for smartwatch. Ah. Uh -huh button, camera. Let's see what else it says in here. We always like to go through these. User manual. Okay. Okay. Now I show you this, so if you want to freeze frame and read it, you can. Otherwise, I'm just going to page through it. Tell you a little story. I was at a party. Don't go to parties often, but went to a party and they had uh, 
one of those home recognition thingamajiggers, you know, the little round things. I think this one was from Amazon. And I had to say, uh, we were all playing with it, and uh, I, I, I decided I was going to show off and uh, show my Twitter skills, you know, all the acronyms everybody touts around. And so I go, Alexa, what's WTF mean? Um, don't ask that. And, and if I just accidentally activated your Alexa and it gave you an answer, I'm so sorry. I hope your children weren't in the room. But talk about being embarrassed. All right, and here it is in Chinese. I had no idea what the uh, the uh, Google one or the Cortana one or the Siri one or any of those will do, but don't do it with Alexa. Okay, we have the smartwatch. I have not charged it up yet. Um, let's go do that. And oh man, I like this watch. Um, one screw to take out the back to put in a SIM card, heart rate monitor, charging port, four screws to take the back cover off if you need to. And like I said, it's got a camera and 16 gigabytes of memory. And the, the band is one of those rubberized um, TF, what do they call them? Um, silicone rubber bands. You can see definitely the antennas are in the band. There's the cutouts for them. They're not removable. So um, fixed bands not leather, uh, more better for sports, I would think. Uh, if you're sweating, it's not going to get it wet. And if you put it on without even turning it on, it looks like that. Very attractive. All right, let's get ready. Turn this thing on. Okay, we're all charged up, ready to go. But uh, I wanted to show you this. I've got uh, one of those little cable things. Now, notice the lip around the edge of it and the four pins and the magnets and the pins on the back of the watch. And I'm going to drop it in place. And it does magnetically touch. What I don't know is if the pins are long enough to actually make contact and charge. Check the end of the video. I'll, I'll plug it in and give it a try and let you know at the end of the video. In the meantime... What are we actually looking at? I didn't even talk about the name. I was so excited. It's a Lympho LES-1 watch. We're at that standard 1.4 inch AMOLED circular display. A lot of the watches now are coming out in the same size, just different packaging and, in this case, different memory on board. Uh, we're running a 6850, 1.3 quad core uh, Android 5.1. Now, while we're all excited about the memory uh, that's in this, Somewhere here. I do want to mention that we're a quad core processor, Android 5.1, and there it is 16 gigabytes of memory, battery, battery, battery uh, drainers. I don't know how this is going to handle and hold up in, um, in battery testing. Uh, obviously, in this little overview first look, uh, I'm not going to be able to tell you how the battery looks or lasts. But I'm going to invite those of you um, who get one of these watches to test it out and report back to us in the uh, comments down below. And I'll try to do some testing. I usually don't because it's a laborious process. But I'll try because this is the first 16 gigabyte watch out. I'll try to run it down a bit a few times and see if I'm getting a day, six hours, two days, what we're actually getting out of it. A little worried because of the high speed of the processor and, of course, the extra load that that much memory is going to give to it. We have uh, these frequency bands. A little worried about the 2G, 3G thing because most of the 2G is gone now. So check your countries to make sure that uh, the 3G is going to work. Um, that's uh, something that's... Now we have to think about, even just for phone calls, let alone for data. Uh, the screen is 400 by 400. It's a tiny camera. They're always that tiny camera. They're really only two megapixel cameras. It's nice that they're honest about it. Even the ones that, uh, that say five megapixels are really not that. They're probably two megapixels, and they interpolate it upward to make it seem like five megapixels. But it's got your basic two megapixel camera. Uh, Bluetooth 4.0, all these other things in there. There's the battery size, which isn't a big screaming battery. So somehow between all of these, we got to get some life uh, out of it. IP67, really? Okay, that's pretty high. Uh, but it says not suitable for shower, swimming, or diving. IP68, probably. 
for that. But anyway, it should be good and splash proof, especially if you have that cover in there really good. Uh, it's Android, iOS support, your standard tethering, which is pretty weak. Uh, hopefully going to improve over time, but it is a standalone watch, so it's really designed for using it with a SIM card, as long as the frequencies are covered that you can use it, right? All right, it does work on Wi-Fi, and I and a lot of other people just pretty much use these on Wi-Fi in, in terms of getting connectivity. Let's turn it on, finally. Hush up and do it. There we go. Look, a whole new beginning. Balloons. I mean, a big... Whoa. We've seen that before on some of the newer Limfo watches. That's their new beginning. Oh, that's new. They've got the actual watch name. Oh, no. They gave it to me in Chinese. Did I mention this is a prototype coming right from the company? This is one of the first ones out. And I'm afraid I'm going to have to get in here and change the Chinese. There's that really cool watch face that uh, they've uh, started putting on their watches. And when we press and hold, we should get into the watch face. Oh, they made it the first one. All right, let's walk through the watch faces. Well, that's a new watch face. Huh, okay. I haven't set the date, the time, or anything. It's not on the internet. So it, what you see is what it is when it just first turns on. It's not the 14th of Tuesday, 9.05, but here it is. Later on, we'll get it all on uh, the correct time when I put it on the, uh, the network, just to show you the watch faces at this point. Wow, they've, they're doing new watch faces, custom design ones of their own invention, because these I have not seen anywhere else. That's bizarre. Look at that little hand sticking over there. It says it's about 85% battery. Huh. Okay. Okay. Huh. Interesting. I have to study these more. All right, we've seen that one before. Steps and temperature. Here's something different as well. Showing the moon in different quarters, I guess. A very simple, straightforward. You can tell it's in Chinese, can't you? Okay, I'm going to be taking a pause in a minute. Maybe we'll try to fuss through the language together. Let's see if we can figure it out. If I can't figure it out easily, I will cut all that section out and we'll just jump in. But if it's kind of straightforward, we'll do that. Hey, they're tied into their server, but of course I'm not on the internet, so we'll have to add, check the additional faces that you can put on later. All right, let's go back to our opening face. Those are the stock ones that come with the watch. We slide over, and we've got icon-driven Chinese. And that looks like a tool thing, doesn't it? Okay, that looks like speaker, and blah, blah, and blah, blah, and connectivity, and that thing, and... That thing, um, we're looking for language and input. My guess would be this. <clears throat> um, ah, there we go. English. English, current keyboard is the watch IME. All right, I think we're on everything we need. And yay, yay. All right, everything's back into English. Okay, the button takes us off. Huh? doesn't take us back. It turns it off, off and on. All right, let's dive into this watch. So the layout of this watch is typical Android, what we've seen. I'm going to scroll my thumb to the right to get to the notification screen. From that home screen, if I scroll the thumb to the left, you get your list of applications. Scroll one more time, you get your music player. And that's it on this level. Scroll down, you get this display, which shows your battery power in a circular way and uh, written, and the date and time with a couple of indicators, whether you have your SIM card in or not. Scroll over here, and you can have volume on, or you can go into silent mode. You have the uh, tilt your arm to see the time display, airplane mode, cellular, and location um, information that turns on and off your GPS. 
you have your power level that you can uh, d change the display brightness. You have Bluetooth and you have Wi-Fi. And one more time, you get your uh, basic steps, your step count. And that's on that level. And then one time more and you go into your weather display. And here's what it looks like. Simple as that. And you can hit the refresh button at the bottom if you want to update it. It's always in centigrade, though. We haven't been able to figure out how to change the, uh, the temperature to Fahrenheit. That's the layout of the watch of how you maneuver around. So first thing I want to do is where we were before, go back into settings, go into display, and give me a little more than 15 seconds before it times out. Let's go back to 30 minutes, goodness. All right. Now we'll parade through all of it. Um, basically, you've got your contacts, which because it's a standalone phone thing, you're going to need to have a SIM card in in order to see those. Uh, there's your phone, and if you try to make a phone number, phone call, oh, that's not even a phone call preface. All right, it comes back and says no SIM or SIM error. So you know it's not a dual mode kind of, of, of watch, and none of the Android ones are anyway. But if it uh, gave you the choice of doing it locally or tethered, you'd see that information there. So this does not tether for making phone calls, all right? Or messaging, I'm sure. But here's your messaging area where you can set everything up and have all your messaging um, commands and settings if you are on the uh, tied to the Internet through cellular or Wi-Fi and have a SIM card. Well, that doesn't make sense. You have to have the SIM card. It won't work over Wi-Fi messaging. Okay. Coming back to settings in a minute. Remote capture is if we are tethered to a phone, and we showed this in other videos, this is where uh, you would be able to take a picture touching the watch, but the picture would be taken by your phone. All right. Um, loose level of tethering. Your basic browser is here. Your calendar is here and again it's just a basic calendar it doesn't really do much it doesn't show any of the days you can't enter any information into it clock is what they actually mean for alarms and here's where you go in and set the alarms we've seen all this in android 5.1 all right now we turn on the camera you're looking at the side of the box what can i look at uh a pair of scissors all right there's a pair of scissors uh, against the box. Yeah, just enough that I can take a picture. Oh, I think I'm shooting a video. And it's upside down. Look at the counter going. Well, we'll see how this turns out anyway. Maybe it'll capture my audio. And it's saving that. And I'm going to take the picture. Whoops, with my arm in the way. Take another one. Oh, it's my finger. Okay, I just wanted some sample stuff so that we can come in here and take a look at them. Wow, how come it's upside down? Everything's here. It looks like all of the... Um, maybe you can set it for your left arm or your right arm. I have no idea what it's doing. Uh-huh. Motion track mode. Interesting. All right. Well, here's where my pictures are anyway. And this is correct. Details. What we wanted to do was see if we can. Yes, we can. Pinch and zoom. You can pinch and zoom in on the pictures. That's really, really nice because a lot of times you can't do that. It's only two megapixels, so you're starting to see pixelization there, right? And if I double tap, you can go back down. Okay. Double tapping doesn't zoom in but pinch and zoom does so you have that capability there's where i took the one with my finger and here's the video let's play it oh i think i'm shooting a video and it's upside down look at the counter going well we'll see how this turns out anyway maybe it'll capture my audio yeah, the audio is kind of soft i can hear it i hope you can hear it i'm obviously talking louder than the audio there and i haven't adjusted the audio on this thing yet either so it does shoot video. It's got a built-in camera. It's not all that bad in terms of detail, I guess. Um, and you got 16 gigabytes of memory. So pretty cool. Oops, I'm pushing the camera. Pretty cool what it can do. 
That's the camera. Then the gallery is where we would see all of these pictures, right? At least the uh, folder of them. Okay, that, that has a folder of those three pictures in it. So maybe they, it's storing them by day. Music. Oh, wow, we have some music in here that was left over. Oh, that's good and loud. Wow. I love it when I get a prototype watch because it's got stuff. Oh, 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 that's right. We're on YouTube. I can't play more than a few seconds or they're going to mess with me. And Okay. What else is here? This is really loud, folks. I actually would have to turn that down. It's so loud. All right. So music stored on the watch is playable through there. Remote control, this may be the remote music. It looks like it had headphones. So this is where you would play the music that's stored on your phone through the remote control with the tethering watch. This is the music that's actually in the watch itself. The sound recorder, and we play with this all the time. Hello, the brand new LES-1 from Lempho has 16 gigabytes of memory. Save it. And recording list, and play it. Hello, the brand new LES-1 from Lempho has 16 gigabytes of memory. That's really loud. That's amongst uh, the loudest I've heard for a sound recorder. I'm impressed. Speakers on the side, right here, where you'll be able to have it uh, and hear it, you know, from your wrist. And it's good and loud, both for the music and for the sound recorder. The video, eh, I'm not too sure about that, but, you know, uh, that's just videos. Okay, here's where we get down to it. Look at this. We've hardly used any. Uh, it's, it's allowing us to have... Uh, Total of almost 12 and a half gigabytes after you subtract out for the Android 5.1 and the firmware and a few of the apps and other things that they have in there. Probably even some of those songs and things. I don't know. Anyway, we have 12 and a half, 12 and a half gigabytes of stuff available in here. Space. Um, yeah, that's really nice. While we have a white screen on our background, I did want to point out something I'm not that happy about. I was hoping that the uh, white screen, you see the screen itself, would be edge to edge, would go right to the silver bezel. But it doesn't. There's a black buffer and a relatively big one at that that's between the screen and the bezel itself. Um, if you guys look at the Lympho Y3 and compare that with this one, maybe I'll do a comparison video for you so you can see the difference. But um, that's edge to edge technology in the Y3. So you would see the screen come right to this edge, and it really makes it feel like it's a bigger watch. Whenever you have one where the screen is suppressed with a black band around it, eh, eh, eh. But not having no bezel so that you can easily swipe across is really an asset. Just wish that uh, whole screen were bigger, or the whole watch were smaller to fit you know, you know the, just, there wasn't that bezel. Find me if you're tethered. We'll make your phone um, vibrate and, and ring. Here's our health section where we have the pedometer and the heart rate monitor. Okay, we'll go through the heart rate again. I know so many of you just fast forward through this. Scene one, scene them all. It's the same icon we've seen before. They work kind of. They don't work sometimes. Um, we really don't have a good feel for how accurate they are but it is at least checking the heart rate. Um, there you go. Oh, and other people have played with it that are a lot more on caffeine than I am. Look at that. Oh, wait a minute. I'm pumping up now. <laughs> Usually you can set this to give you one reading or it'll uh, be continuous. Um, they haven't yet made it so it'll uh, vibrate or make a sound when you hit a threshold. I'm waiting for that. That would be awesome. So you could work out in a target zone. That's pretty much a fitness watch that'll do that. This is the one diode kind of uh, thing. We've seen others that have two that seem to be more advanced, um, but it's the heart rate monitor. And the pedometer 
is where you do your steps and you can do an interval pedometer where you can actually start it and track your steps versus time. So it has a little bit of sports functionality. Your weather, you have to be connected to the network for it to set up and download your weather. Most likely it's only in Celsius. We have not seen these watches gravitate to where you can choose your units yet. Voice search, when again we're logged in on the web, will let us go into uh, your Google voice search area and do that. You can also, I'm sure, put in Google now. Okay, it's giving me things that I'm not on the network. And then, of course, your Play Store. It's interesting to see that they're using totally different icons than what we're used to. It's like they've come up with their own icon scheme because this is not the icon you would see for the Play Store. All right, that's all of the installed apps, which are very few, actually, for such a massive amount of memory. Let's go into settings. We haven't done that. I can't get rid of that network uh, thing here. So let's press and hold. There we go. And this shows you another thing. Here's where you have the full screen or the tiny square. You can toggle between that. So if you have third-party apps that take up all the space and you can't get to the menu items that are in the corners, change it from full to square and the app will play in the square. Then you can touch and access the menu items or the save button or whatever's off the screen. And when you're done with that, you can come back and and tap it and go back to full. Nice feature. You have your recent tasks, which is where you can delete whoops, all of the uh, recent tasks you had running one by one. Just slide and get rid of them, right? And I don't see a global one either to get rid of everything. So on this implementation, you have to do them one by one. And then you have your wallpaper. They always talk about a wallpaper. And that's the image that's in the background there. Wow, there were a lot of things open that were on this watch. Did you see some of those go flashing by? They've uninstalled those, uh, like the, the GPS testing, the engineering MTK thing, which we'll put on and add a little bit more to this video after I get it all on the network and everything. Um, but anyway, as a prototype watch, all that stuff was in there too. We go into settings, we have sound, and you see the media volume was up all the way. There's our alarm. Here's our ringtone volume. All the way up. Good and loud watch. You have your ringtones here that you can select from a huge list of them. Good clarity, good bass. It's not distorting. I'm very impressed with the audio here. And you have your default notifications, which as usual, you can pick all different kinds. And there's short little audio bursts for notifications. You can have it vibrate as well as make noise on incoming calls. Our display we showed you, we have a brightness selection here. And all the way down is like that, which is still pretty bright, you know. But you won't see that in the sunlight. And bright, bright is very bright. That will probably be nice and bright outdoors. We had it set at about there for the video. We're sleeping after 30 minutes in normal size fonts. Uh, app list style, we have only one, and that's the list. Sometimes you have it matrix, and sometimes you have it circular. But this watch is just showing it to you one way, and it's got those fancy new icons uh, for everything, too. Connect is where you do the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. You can put this watch in a Wi-Fi hotspot. And if it isn't bad enough that you're running a quad-core processor, Android 5.1, and 16 gigabytes of memory, then why not put it in a Wi-Fi hotspot and drain your battery in 15 minutes, right? A 350 um, milliamp hour battery uh, with all of this capability running is going to, I think it's going to run down pretty quick. But we'll see. We will see. Airplane mode, GPS, and restrict apps in the background um, to save uh, power. That's connectivity. Here's what you want to scan. It's probably going to bring up, um, oh, I forget which app, uh, the tethering app for Android standalone watches. I believe it was Sinware. And it's pretty lame, unfortunately, although I hear they're in the works of of improving the tethering app or coming up with the next generation. And if they do, it might actually offer a lot more capability, not just to this one, but all the Android watches that uh, rely on that same thing. Gesture, this lets you uh, turn the watch on when you raise your arm 
or turn on and off pedestrian, <laughs> pedestrian pedometer services. So let's see when we turn it off, if when we tilt it, it comes on. And it does in the format of the little digital display. It's not your chosen watch face. If you want the watch face that you have selected to show up, it's true of all of these watches that work this way, you tilt it, you touch it, and it fades into it. And now you're in your stock watch face for as long as the timeout that you set, in this case, 30 minutes. I'm really going to burn my battery down, I tell you. That's the gesture thing. Power savings shows you uh, your power and how long it's going to last, given what you're doing. And the screen is always the biggest power eater. So keep it as dim as possible. Language and input we found through the icon-driven process so we could change it back to English. And I don't think you saw all the other languages. So let's give you the run-through of the uh, languages that come with this watch. Eh, pretty good selection. Okay. We always get asked if Russian is on the list. Is Russian one of these? All right, we're in English, the standard keyboard, but you can install other ones. Google Voice Typing, Voice Input, Text-to-Speech Output with Pico. This is an example of speech synthesis in English. Yeah, nice. This is an example of speech synthesis in English. I like that. Okay. it You know, if you go in here and you hit the Settings button, um, you can change it from using the system languages to the different languages that they have. It's kind of dim to see here. Um, English, USA, and English, Great Britain. Now, I'm not able to change it right now, but sometimes you can... Uh, oh, here we go. English, UK. Instead of English, uh, USA, and then you get a different voice. This is an example of speech synthesis in English. And sometimes you can install more up-to-date voices... Uh, some of the Google type voices or others, but the Pico TTS is the one that it's using right now. And we'll just use the system language that it's set for. Okay, more than you wanted to know. Date and time, you can do this automatically over the network, or you can set the 12 or 24 hour format. I like to run in the PM AM 12 hour format. And I think that's what we're on when it's here. If they really mean use the 12-hour format, when you switch it this way, it's using the 24-hour format. They didn't fix that, but that's what it's on now. Um, you reset your equipment. You can uninstall your applications, any of them that you have installed from there. And then about the watch. So what have we got? We have a Lempho. And they're not even calling it the LEM1 yet in the firmware. Android 5.1. Here's all the good numbers you need. And the kernel version is uh, Valentine's Day, Tuesday, February 14th, 2017. So when you get yours, check it against this to see what firmware you're running. And perhaps it'll be a higher version. And in fact, it could be a higher version, which when I do a wireless update, after I put it on the network, we can check it and see if there's uh, something waiting to update the watch. But for now, that is what we have in settings. We've looked at all the other apps, and we've looked at all of the uh, watch faces. So I'm going to take a break. I'm going to put this on Wi-Fi. I'm going to download a few things like the Antutu and uh, the engineering MTK stuff so we can check the GPS and be right back with a quick overview of uh, a little bit more of the techie stuff. But let me tell you, um, this is a nice watch. It's a loud watch. It's a good-looking watch. Okay, we are on the network, and we have some apps in here. First thing I want to do is go into the watch screens and take you to the plus sign. And uh, these are now the downloaded watch faces with potential for downloading to the watch that are supported on the Lympho uh, server. And there's some pretty nice-looking watches here. Check these out. Any one of them you want to add, just hit that little down arrow and they'll be immediately downloaded to the watch. And its little thing is twirling down here, meaning that there's still more to go. And so it's going to load up a few more. So just by example, let's take that pretty green smartwatch one. 
hit the download button. I think I hit it. Yeah, it said 100%. And it says in Chinese, I think, that it's been downloaded. Any more? Okay, bringing in some more. Yeah, yeah. There's a nice black and white, easy one to see with a heart rate, I guess, on it. Let's download that one. C says 0%. 85, 90, 100. Okay. Okay, some digital looking watches. And some white ones, some dark ones. And who knows how many there are. It looks like it could just go on and on and on. Uh, I don't want to take any more time, so let's just bail out of this and see what we've got. So we had those two that we've added, and all I need to do is select it, and there you go. It's on the screen. So amongst other ways that we can input watches, download watch faces to this watch, which we have other videos on, uh, there is this plus sign capability as well, which is the easiest way to add the uh, smart watch, uh, watch faces that have been supported by Limfo, but not actually put on the watch when it's shipped. There are additional ones that you can easily add simply by scrolling over to the plus button, clicking on it, and loading them up, and then tapping the download. Okay, so I've downloaded some apps, some technical kind of apps that we're going to play with. There's that new one. Interesting. Monday. Okay, it actually has the days of the week there. Nice, smooth-moving uh, second hand as well. All right, over to the apps. Down here, you see that we have, at the bottom of the Play Store, the Antutu Benchmark and its supporting app the Engineering Mode MTK, and the AIDA64. I want to start here and show you this. In the system, it's telling us, in addition to this being all Limfo, that we have right here one gigabyte of installed RAM. It's using, or total memory is 971 megabytes, and available is 432 megabytes. That should be, you know, like the RAM that it, it's using while it's working. Then we have the internal storage, and its total space is 12.97 gigabytes, of which I have almost all of it available, because we only have, I guess, those songs that were in there and a couple of apps I've put in. Huge amount of space to be able to use in this watch, and it's branded as internal storage, not external, which hopefully means that when you install your apps, they'll go into that area and it basically means it's unlimited how many apps you could actually put on the watch. Hopefully that's what it means. Otherwise, they only go in that one megabyte partition, and you're going to run out of space quickly. You have all this memory, but not enough room for uh, the memory for the apps to run. I don't know that for sure. Look in the show notes, and I'll let you know which way it goes, whether you can put thousands of apps in there or maybe a dozen. All right, that's kind of what I wanted to show you in that one. Then the Antutu score is kind of a combination of how fast your processor is and how much memory you've got. And with a quad-core processor and 16 gigabytes, we get a 20,469 reading, which is amongst the highest, if not the highest, that I've seen on a watch. Again, very high score implies a lot of power needs, and so this could adversely affect the battery. It's always a trade-off, okay? And we're looking to see what that battery life is going to be. Again, check the show notes and the comments down below. If you're thinking about this watch but concerned about the battery life. Um, we won't know for a while. It takes a while to hash all that out. It's going to take you guys a while to get this watch to even play with. So if you want to be a trailblazer and jump on in and get it, go for it. Because I think it's going to be a really good watch. And finally, engineering mode MTK. I don't believe this. I set this up. I ran it. This is our GPS is what we're looking at. Okay, that's the map of the satellites in the sky. And folks, we are indoors. We are under a camera. And through that is my smiling head. And beyond that brain cell matter is a ceiling. And then there's the sky. I very rarely, if ever, get stable green satellite reception indoors. I usually have to run outdoors, get a lock, get a link, bring it in real quickly and show you because these things fade out within one to two minutes. All that time I've been recording and showing you the other apps and the watch faces. This has been running in the background with solid GPS connection. This right now I can say with confidence is the strongest GPS signal I have on any watch. 
Beautiful. Be beautiful. Wow. All right. Uh, that's engineering uh, mode MTK. And we did the N22. And we've showed you the uh, AIDA64. So we have covered everything in this watch, how to put in the uh, watch faces with the plus sign. So by now you're probably wondering which firmware is supported on this version of Android 5.1 for installing custom watch faces. Will it work at all? If it does work, do you do it by putting in the APK files that we saw in the early Kingware KW88 firmware? Or is it supporting the updated firmware that engages the full clock engine so you can drop in custom watch faces as easily as putting in the clock skin folder and adding these watch faces to it? Well, there's your answer. Yes, it's like what we call the new version of the uh, KW88 uh, firmware. Because it's all coming from the same top source in the implementation of Android 5.1 on these watches. Uh, it has rippled down to the point where in the brand new Lempho LEM LES1, <laughs> uh, this watch right here, that all these custom watch faces uh, are supported and beautifully too. So that is going to make uh, a big difference because all of these are now going to be available. Of course, I'm showing you a bunch of my favorites. Um, there's other videos out there that, that go through where you can get these watch faces and how to install them and even how to create your own. All right. Lempho has it. Look at the Lympho website. I'll have a link directly to this watch because this was not shown on their main website. You have to kind of have the link to get to it. But it is available, they say, right now in uh, pre-order. Our partner Banggood is also going to be offering the Lympho LES-1 in a tiered pre-sale fashion. Uh, the first 30 units are already sold out at $129.99. We're just beginning the next series at $136.99. I don't have any coupons on this one in the show notes down below because it's brand spanking new. And this is the tiered way they're able to introduce the watch to you. It doesn't come out officially till March 27th. And uh, there's up to 200 units at this price. And then it goes up to a final price of $140.99. It's 16 gigabytes on here. Loudspeaker, full Android 5.1, nice watch. So... Yeah, this is actually a really good price right now. So jump on it if you're interested. Check the show notes. We definitely will have the link to this page where you can get it at the pre-sale price. Oh, yeah. And just in case you were wondering, ta-da, it works. <laughs> yeah, good watch. All right, see you guys later.